All right, here we are with our 2006 Honda Accord, and we're gonna do a valve adjustment video. And uh, well, the first part of that process is gonna be removing the valve cover. And uh, to see all the details on that, just refer to our video for valve cover gasket replacement. All right, so here is our collection of valve adjustment tools. Oh, and this, by the way. <laughs> so, we got, uh, th this is the special tool that is basically a 10 millimeter socket. Well, it even says right on there. And then a flat screwdriver that goes through it. And uh, that's for uh, adjusting and locking down the rocker arm nuts. And uh, then the filler gauge, of course has this, the, um, what do you call these, the little thickness, whatever, the, yeah. <laughs> the, it's like 45 degree angle. Yeah, th this one is good for this vehicle because the 45 degree angle helps with the kind of awkward positioning of the rocker arms. So that would be helpful. Or if you get just regular feeler gauges, you can always bend them because um, they're just thin metal. And then we did have a vent hose that was in the way um, when we were getting to inspecting um, cylinder three and four. So we used our um, needle nose pliers to take off the clamp and move that vent hose out of the way. And then if, uh, well, on cylinder number one, this tool was pretty hard to get in there. Uh, it really wasn't working. So you can also use basically essentially what this is is a 10 millimeter socket and a screwdriver a flathead so you know that's the alternate right there and then when you're rotating the crankshaft this is a uh, half inch ratchet with an extension and a 19 millimeter socket so you can uh, rotate the crankshaft to get to top dead center on each of the individual cylinders and that's basically the tools right there. All right, so this is the label that's right under the hood. And uh, this is the emissions control information. And right there, uh, you'll see the specs for the valve lash um, adjustment. And uh, you can see the intake is a little bit less at 0.23 millimeters. And the exhaust is at 0.3 millimeters, plus or minus 0 0.02. So when you use your um, feeler gauge as long as you're within that range so 0.23 would be between 0.21 and 0.25 um, because it's plus or minus 0 0.02 and uh, on the exhaust 0 0.30 um, with the lash variation would be 0.28 to 0.32 so that's what we're going to be shooting for when we do our adjustment right now all right, so as part of the valve adjustment, um, well, this is definitely necessary. Um, you need to rotate the engine to where the uh, pistons are um, each at their top dead center. And uh, so in order to do that, you need to rotate the motor manually. And uh, to gain access, well, there's the crankshaft bolt in there, which I guess you could access it through this opening, but it's nicer just to take out the clips and uh, you can just pry these clips out. I sprayed it with WD-40 to get it to loosen up a little. And then there's another clip under here. There you go, that clip. And then you can just peel it back and there's the crankshaft bolt. Uh, I think that's, yeah, that's got to be a 17. It's a Honda. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's where we're going to uh, get our big ratchet and rotate the engine and get uh, it to top dead center. Let's see, we got camshafts. Uh, we got intake and exhaust cams. And then the rockers are down below. And then there's the adjustment screw. And then there's a lock nut right there. And that's what we're going to be... Uh, using to make an adjustment if needed. So we're going to use our filler gauge to check. And uh, yeah, we're going to rotate the motor and see cylinder by cylinder if an adjustment is needed or maybe a few adjustments. All right, so now we're rotating the engine so that we can get it to top dead center 
for cylinder number one. We're using a, a ratchet and a, a uh, well, it's a half inch ratchet with a, a 19 millimeter socket so that we can rotate the motor and you need to rotate it uh, clockwise on this particular vehicle, which is, well, typical of most. Oh, wait, here we go, I see the arrow. The arrow is going inward. All right, so we're cranking our engine over and uh, the arrow there, um, that's the one that needs to be pointing up when, uh, or when you're at top dead center, that's gonna indicate um, that you're on cylinder number one. Uh, hold on there, there we go. Uh, let's see, so we got, yeah, I see them. We got our two notches right there. Wait, we got our two notches pointing together. Am I, oh, I'm blocking it, sorry. <laughs> so we got our, our two notches uh, on the cam gears, and then we got this, the dot, and hard to see, but the arrow right there. And those are pointing up, and then the notches are pointing at each other. So now we're at, at top dead center for cylinder number one. All right, so here we're showing the alignment marks, uh, which are indicating top dead center. Um, actually, you know, I just noticed there's an arrow on this uh, cam bearing cap that lines up with this arrow here. And then uh, there's also, if you look, there's a dot and another dot that show that, uh, well, that basically should be uh, pointing up and then also to for extra measure trying to show there's two notches here um, so that, uh, you can see they line up together um, side by side and then when you see all of that in alignment then you're at top dead center for cylinder number one which will be the first cylinder right behind the cam gears Along with uh, matching up the camshaft gears, the other thing that you want to do to verify and ensure that you have the correct top dead center for cylinder number one is there's a white mark on the crankshaft pulley down below and the timing cover has an arrow on it. And uh, hopefully you can see here <laughs> that that's what we have lined up. And when you have those in alignment along with the marks on the cam gears, then you have top dead center for cylinder number one and you're ready to do the valve clearance inspection and uh, possible adjustment for cylinder number one. All right, so when you're doing the valve adjustment, you need to uh, follow the firing order. And so the front of the engine is over here on the passenger side where the cam gears are. And so this is cylinder, cylinder number one. And then the firing order is one, three, four, and then two. So that's the order that you're gonna do your valve adjustment in. And each, as you go along, each um, piston is gonna go to top dead center. And that's where you wanna be when you're doing the adjustment for that particular cylinder. So now we're ready to check and see what the clearance is on our rockers here, our valve clearance. And uh, the ideal setting would be the, uh, would be 0 0.009 inches or 0 0.2, well, 0 0.23 millimeters. This 0 0.009 actually comes out to 0 0.229 millimeters. But, so we're checking it. And, eh, it doesn't wanna quite go in, but, if we check uh, at the lower end of the spec, we can go for the 0 .008 and see how that goes. And let's see what we get. Mm. Yeah, see, there you go. So now you can see we're still within spec. This fits loose enough. And try the other side. 
see if we can get that one. Oh, yep, there we go. Nope, no, I think I was off. I'm trying to make this look good for the camera, but I know my hand's gonna be in the way. Mm, that one might be under spec. This one doesn't seem to want to go in. And that's the lower end of the spectrum right there. 008. So I think we're going to have to adjust at least one rocker arm. But while we're at it, might as well do both probably. Yeah, check that. It doesn't want to go in there. Uh, it goes on this side. Or it did. <laughs> Maybe it's just an angle. Yeah, it might be a, just a weird angle. Oh, the other thing we should mention um, that I just realized we didn't mention before is that you need to do this when the engine is cold. So if you do this when it's hot and uh, metals have expanded, um, yeah, see, there you go. That one's fine. But if you do this when it's hot and the metals have expanded, you're not going to get an accurate reading. So, you got to do it when the engine is cold. It's just kind of awkward on this motor because the rockers are down below the cam. And uh, that makes it difficult. But yeah, this one's a little out of spec. So, anyways. Um, yeah, we're going to have to do the adjustment now, which involves the 10 millimeter nut and a screwdriver or a special tool, which there are tools like that out there that are designed for the Hondas. And um, this is the same tool that works for the old school Hondas, um, the old 90s uh, cars. And uh, although the design of the engine is different, uh, the adjustment of the valve clearance is still the same. All right, so here's our special valve adjusting tool. It basically is a 10 millimeter socket with a screwdriver that drops down in the middle of it. And so what we'll do to start is uh, loosen the nut. Oh, there we go. So once we have it loosened, then uh, you can drop the screwdriver down and you can play with the adjustment and we'll take our uh, feeler gauge here and there we go so you can kind of well, in this case you can just kind of set the gauge set down and then just very lightly turn the screw until you feel resistance and that's when you're in the spec there and then just hold it firmly in place and then tighten the nut and oops see look in this case it got too tight so I'm going to loosen it again and turn it just a little bit back just lightly tighten it Right, we're still, we're still good. So there we go. Now take out the filler gauge and there? move on to the next one. Let's see here. It's kind of a weird angle. So there we go. So yeah, so you can see the point two two nine fits in there, and uh, so we're good on this side. So that one doesn't require an adjustment, uh, but if it did, it would be just the same procedure on both sides. And uh, this is an EV tech, so it has um, two rockers that are running on two different cam lobes until the VTEC kicks in. And then on the other side, you got just one cam lobe on the exhaust. So EV tech is just a setup where um, there's a special um, design to the intake side. 
Anyways, so now we're gonna go to the exhaust and check the clearance over there. So on the exhaust side, it's the same procedure. It's a little hard to see the camera, but the ideal setting would be about 0 0.30 millimeters. And I'm checking both sides because there's two valves per, uh, well, four valves per cylinder. Two on the intake, two on the exhaust. That one doesn't want to go in, so I'm going to try the next size down. See if it's still within specs. And in this case, even on the lower end, it doesn't seem to be going in there. So I think we're going to have to loosen these up a little bit. Is there the feeler gauge is not fitting in there? Maybe just to see, get an idea, could try the next size down, which is definitely out of spec. You can see what um, about what clearance we have going on. Man, even this one doesn't want to go in. So yeah, we're definitely out of range. That's a point one seven three. Jeez, that one doesn't even fit in there. <laughs> All right, so we gotta loosen these up, get them back into the the range they're supposed to be. So we'll go for the ideal, the point three. All right, so the special tool is ooh, that's tight. What am I doing? All right, so. It's easier to just get a ratchet in there and loosen that up. So, and then you can just take your, this is the standard way without using the special tool. And then you can just use your screwdriver to loosen it up. And then we'll take the feeler gauge and see where we can get it in. And it still doesn't want to go in, so let's loosen it up a little more. There we go. Okay, I had in the wrong spot there. So let's crank it down to where it's supposed to be. Oh, there we go. Got a little drag. This motor, you gotta make sure you get it at just the right angle. Okay. All right, so we got a little drag on it. All right, so I'm just gonna leave that in there. And, okay. Nope. I keep it square on there. Man, it's such an angle. Let's see. We're still within spec. Let's see. Sucks when it's at this weird angle. Oh, there we go. I think we're still good. There we go. Let's make sure it didn't. See, as if you just tighten it with a socket, there's a chance that the screw that actually tunes the setting is out of whack. Oh. We got lucky. That one's still good. All right, now let's check the other exhaust side. Hmm. This one might be out of whack too. Yeah, that needs to get loosened up. Alright, 
so knock the lock nut loose. Power steering hose is lit on the way. So just the screw a little bit out. Let's get the feeler gauge in there. Still doesn't want to go in. There we go. Now I can slide that filler gauge in there. So that's pretty ideal right there. All right, let's see if it's still okay. Yeah, there we go. If you get lucky, you don't need the special tool in these awkward positions. There we go. Yeah, all right. So double check, both sides, that one's good. Yeah, this first cylinder is a pain. There we go, yep, good little bit of resistance. So we're cool. We're good on cylinder number one, finally. And uh, then next cylinder is gonna be three because the firing order is one, three, four, two. All right, so now we're gonna rotate the crankshaft 180 degrees. And uh, when you do that, it's the camshaft gears are going to turn 90 degrees. So you can kind of watch from above here. See that arrow? Uh, once that thing goes um, to the right, when you're looking at it, then uh, you're in the right spot. A little bit more. Yeah, there you go. Actually, a little more. Yeah, I think that's good right there. Yeah. Okay. So now we got our arrow uh, basically parallel with the head and uh, now we uh, should have our number three cylinder back here um, at top dead center and then we can check those uh, rocker arms you can check them and see that yeah you can feel a little play in them so that's good it's a good sign that you're in the right spot so we'll use our feeler gauge and check those the next cylinder after one is three and uh, there's a little bit of an obstruction here with this hose, so it's going to go ahead and unclip it there. Use the pliers to break it free. Okay, that should be good. Yeah, here it's coming. Okay, so we'll just push it out of the way. And now we got room to get to uh, number three. Let's see, we'll do the intake side. So we got 0.23. Let's see if that fits in there. And a little bit of it doesn't quite want to go in there, but and it still could be within spec. I'm gonna go for the next size, the, uh, let's see, next size down would be 0 0.203. Yeah, I think we're gonna have to loosen these up. And the 
processing is not the most ideal. Oh, there we go. Okay, that one's within spec. Just getting it in there can be a lot of the fun. Yeah, that one's good. Perfect. Oh, this will be some pot on your back too, by the way. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so we're good. Once you get it in at the right angle, you see we're in spec, so we're cool. Then we want to check the exhaust side. Good. I'm using the ideal 0.30. Yep, that one's good. So we'll move on to the next. No adjustment needed. All right, so now we're rotating the crankshaft so we can check the uh, clearance on cylinder number four. Um, this arrow right down here, we just want to get it pointed directly downward in relation to the engine. Ooh, you're getting close, close, a little more, a little more. And what do you think? Slightly more? Yeah. Yeah, there we go. So we have the engine in position for the valve clearance inspection on cylinder number four. And we're gonna go ahead and check that. All right, so checking the clearances on cylinder number four. Ooh, yeah, just a little drag. That's pretty ideal right there. Ah, there we go. So see, filler gauge just slid in there with a little bit of resistance. So that's great right there. And then we'll do the exhaust side. Okay. Ooh, yep. Yeah. Right in there. Resistance, that's good. It's within spec. Can't even see over there. <laughs> hmm. This one might be a little tighter. Oh, this goes right in. There we go. So we're good on number four. Now we'll move to number two. All right, so now we're cranking the crankshaft uh, another 90 degrees so we can get to where we can do an inspection of cylinder number two. As you can see the arrow here, we're gonna want it, oh, a little bit more. And keep going. A little more. Mm. I think that there, yeah, that's me about it, right there. To the arrow? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the arrow, if you're facing the engine, is gonna go directly to the left, and then you're in position to where you can inspect the valve clearances on cylinder number two. So this vent hose was not in the way anymore, so I put it back, clamped it down. Now we're doing the inspection of uh, cylinder number two, as you can see right there, ooh, the filler gauge just fits in there with a little bit of resistance. And check both sides. Oh, that looks good. So yeah, this, this engine is doing really well. Um, now we're gonna check the uh, exhaust side, which is hard to see on the camera, but it's gotta get it kinda at that angle there. You just kinda go in maybe about 45 degree angle and that one's good it's got a little bit of resistance same thing here so we're good to go um no adjustment needed there it's pretty ideal and uh so now we're gonna go and 
move to the next step of uh, putting our valve cover back on. We have finished inspecting our valve clearances and uh, we made a couple adjustments. Everything looks good now, it's within spec. And uh, for putting the valve cover back on to finish the job, just refer to our valve cover gasket replacement video.